Hey, what's going on, everyone? Coach Luke here. And today we're going to talk about how to get abs. And you can probably hear it right away. My voice is a little bit crackly today. I'm losing my voice for some reason, but I feel fine. So I'm just going to power through this episode and deliver this message to you today. So one of the most popular topics that is discussed in the fitness industry is how do I get abs? How do I get a six pack? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to document what has worked for me to this point. Now, I've never had like a shredded eight pack or anything like that. I have had a six pack before and do currently have uh, close to a six pack as well that I maintain. And I'm just going to document again, what has worked for me to this point and what I've seen work for other people who we've both coached and I've been around. So for those who don't know who I am, my name is Luke Briggs. I'm the owner of the Total Life Fitness Academy. We specialize in helping parents and busy professionals lose body fat, build muscle and have more energy. I've been a coach for about 11 years and I've worked with nearly 3,000 clients. So the first thing that I want to discuss is how to not get abs. And the first thing that most people do when they want to try to get abs is they start doing ab exercises. If you have a lot of body fat to lose, just doing ab exercises isn't going to do much for you. Because you have a lot of belly fat you doing sit-ups, you doing crunches, you doing whatever variation, insert variation here is not going to do much for you because you already have that layer of fat. So just doing ab exercises is not going to do much for you. The second thing that I see a lot of people do is they starve themselves. They'll just eat, you know, a thousand calories a day or 1200 calories a day, and they might get a little bit leaner, but you're going to be fluffier. And we're assuming that if you're listening to this, you want to be hard and defined. And if you want to be hard and defined, you're going to need to do it in a different way. So that's what we're going to go through today. So then once you get lean, abs are like a muscle and you train them to get more defined. So now we want to talk about how to actually get abs. So the first thing to note is that it depends on how lean you want to get. Now, I'm guessing the majority of the people listening to this episode are not people who want to get an absolute shredded six-pack. However, if you do, uh, which I like, you know, I like having invisible abs personally, then the leaner you want to get, the more you'll need to prioritize. So, for example, you know, you can maybe be like pretty consistent with your nutrition or pretty consistent with your workouts if you want to get just maybe an outline of abs or like a flat stomach. But if you truly want like visibility in your abs, like someone takes a picture of you and can visibly see a six pack that requires a different level of discipline and dedication. And neither way is right or wrong. It just depends on what you want. So it ultimately comes down to prioritizing it in your lifestyle. So if you want abs, you can't expect to drink two, three, four nights a week, eat out every Saturday night and just kind of gorge yourself on the weekends and expect to get abs and just train your way to a flat stomach or to a six pack. It's not going to happen. It might work for you if you are 18 years old, but if you're like a lot of people listening to this and you're probably in your 30s, 40s, 50s or beyond, then that's not going to work for you. So, First and foremost, you need to prioritize and understand what commitment is required in order for you to achieve your goal. The first thing that you need to do is you need to eat in a calorie deficit. You need to lose body fat. So by eating in a calorie deficit, what's going to happen is you're going to lean out. And as you lean out, you'll start to see more visibility or definition through your midsection. And I recommend eating in a slight calorie deficit where you're losing like a pound a week versus eating in a massive calorie deficit where you're losing weight very rapidly. Because if you lose too much weight, you're also going to be losing a lot of muscle. And we don't want to lose muscle here at the Total Life Fitness Podcast. We want to lose primarily body fat and maintain as much muscle mass as we can. And muscle is very important, not just from an aesthetic standpoint, but also from a health and longevity standpoint as well. Then what you want to do is you want to lift weights. So again, if you just want to lose weight, that's one thing. But if you actually want to be hard and defined, you need to lift weights. 
So you probably had this happen before where you've lost weight and then you've seen more definition in your shoulders or in your arms. And the reason why that is, is because if you're lifting weights in your upper body, you have muscle there. And then by stripping the body fat away, you're now able to see the muscle and see the, the definition there. If you have no muscle, you're just going to lose weight and your arms are going to get smaller, but you're not going to be more defined. It's the same thing with your abs. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you get your steps in. So you can do cardio and it can be beneficial and it can be a tool to help you achieve a calorie deficit. Now, I personally trained. So right now it's October of 2023 when I'm recording this. And in early June of 2023 this year, I did the last photo shoot that I've done up to this point. And I didn't do any cardio leading up to it. And currently I'm 35 at the time I was 34. So, you know, I'm not like 18 anymore. Um, so for, for cardio, a lot of people just do like an hour, hour and a half of cardio a day. When in reality, like you don't necessarily need to do that, especially because it's not very time efficient. Like if you're trying to burn off an extra like three, 400 calories, you could simply eat three or 400 calories less and it would take basically no time versus taking an hour and a half and trying to crush yourself when you're already working full time, when you're managing the kids, when you're managing other things in your daily schedule. So in my opinion, using nutrition and using steps is very efficient. So the calories burned side of the equation, in order to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. So the calories in versus calories out, the calories outside of the equation is your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, your exercise activity, your non-exercise activity, or your NEAT, and then your, T, your TEF, your thermic effect of food. And if you want to lose weight, you can also burn off calories just from increasing your exercise activity through intentional movement, which are steps. You know, the number 10,000 steps has been thrown around there. And, you know, it just depends on the individual. Um, if you're currently hardly moving at all, I might start at like 8,000 steps and then kind of work your way up from there. I actually personally just earlier this week bought a walking treadmill. Uh, it was about $300. I think I had a little bit of a gift certificate. I mean, you can probably get one for $150, $200. Um, if you want like a cheaper one, um, you can probably get a used one. I got one that was, you know, average, uh, fairly nice because I always want my equipment to be at least decent and want it to last for a long time. So I've already uh, previously, like in the last few weeks, I haven't been hitting as many steps. Like I've had a lot of days where I'm at like, you know, 5,500, 6,000 steps. And I haven't really been satisfied with that. And I haven't been getting outside as much. Um, so what I've been doing instead is getting walks. And like, for example, if I'm like watching a YouTube video or watching a training, then what I'll do is while I'm doing that, I will have my standing desk and I'll elevate it up. Right now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm in my desk, but I have it down and I can elevate my desk and then I can put the walking treadmill underneath it and then use that to get steps. Now, before I had my walking treadmill, I would literally just like walk around the house. That's something you can do too, or you can just walk outside. Um, that's just what's worked for me personally. But getting your steps in can be very beneficial, especially for burning calories. And the entire time I trained for the competition, I did not have a walking treadmill. I just walked outside. Uh, at that point, I was aiming for 12,000 steps per day. So I definitely needed to have like multiple, like 20 to 30 minute walks each day. Because if I didn't, I have a very sedentary job. From this, even though I'm a, a fitness coach, I sit a lot during the day because I'm on Zoom calls with people or I'm creating content or I'm connecting with people on social media or whatever it is. And I'm just sitting down a lot. So I need to be intentional about my movement as well. So all I did was just get steps in. And that's what my coach had me do. And then in terms of getting abs, you need to have a long-term view and be patient. You know, if you're 30 pounds overweight, it might take, if you lose like a pound a week, it might take you 30, even like 50 weeks to get a six pack which could be, you know, seven to 11 or 12 months. And you might be thinking like, oh, wow, that sounds like a really long time. I don't know if I want to do that. And the reality is, would you rather be in a completely different place one year from now? Or would you rather not even try and be in the same place? 
So many people are either all in or all out with their fitness. So many people are either working out six days a week, eating healthy, or they're just not doing anything at all. If you're just consistent, you don't always even have to be perfect, but if you're consistent for a long period of time, you'd be amazed at what you can actually achieve with your body and with your physique. So when it comes to abs, you need to take time. Don't lose weight too quickly. Lose it slowly and steadily and be patient. When I just did my last physique photo shoot, I had done a bulking phase where I gained 50 pounds and then I lost 35 pounds in order to get lean again. And that took me about seven and a half months to lose 35 pounds. And I was patient with it. I started in, you know, mid October of 2022. And, you know, at, at that point I was about 207. And then uh, at the end of my cut, I was about 172, which is right around where I am right now, because right now I'm just maintaining. So it takes a while. You have to have patience and you just have to have discipline and focus, especially if you want visibility in your abs. Now, if you've had a procedure, like for example, gastric bypass, or you've had a lot of belly fat for a long period of time, it's going to be harder to get abs without surgery, without removing skin. Because your abs have been stretched out for so long. So like if you have had a lot of belly fat for 10, 20 plus years, your abs have been stretched out for a really long time. So as you get leaner, you might still have some excess or loose skin. So for you, you might have to have a procedure if you truly want abs, right? You can get a flat stomach, but maybe just not abs at that point. So again, it really just depends on where you're starting from. I'm not saying that to discourage people or that that will necessarily happen. I'm just saying with some of our clients, I've seen that firsthand where they get very lean, but just because they've been overweight for a long period of time, they do have that loose skin. And then that is more of a procedure to remove. Another thing that a lot of people want to know is how do you get your abs to show more? And this is something that I didn't realize until I actually experienced it myself, that there are a couple of things that you can do without doing anything else, not like training or nutrition, just to get your abs to show more. And as someone who has a wicked farmer's tan by and you know some body hair, this applies for men, if you shave your chest and your belly, your abs will show more. And if you use tanning products or you use spray tan, You'll have more consistency in your skin tone and your abs will show more as well. That's why a lot of physique competitors uh, or all physique competitors for that matter and people who are doing photo shoots, they always use tanners. They use spray tans. They go to tanning beds because, I mean, let's be honest, your body just looks better when you are tan versus like me where you're like pasty white. So Shaving your, your chest hair, shaving your belly makes a big difference because then it's not covered up by hair. Again, this applies if you're a guy, then you actually are able to see more visibility. All right, so let's give an example. Let's say you are a 40-year-old man, you are six feet tall, and you are 200 pounds. Let's say you work out four days a week. We're going to use a calorie calculator, we're going to use the Mifflin equation, and we are going to determine that your maintenance intake is approximately 2,700 calories per day, just to round it to a nice even number. So in order to lose about a pound a week, you need to be in a 3,500 calorie a week deficit, which averages to 500 calories a day. So we're going to cut 500 calories from that. So you're going to start at 2,200 calories. Now, if you already know your maintenance intake, and you have truly been tracking for a while, then just use what you know, to, know it to be. What well, you calculate your maintenance intake to be at the beginning, which just means that if you were to do, uh, if you were just trying to maintain your weight, these would be the amount of calories that you would want as a, six, as a 40 year old man, six feet tall, 200 pounds, working out four days a week, fairly active. So we're gonna cut 500 calories from the 2,700. You're gonna be at 2,200 calories per day. Now, 
One thing to note is that you'll probably need to lose more weight than you think in order to get abs. So the first time I did a physique show in 2016, I was 5'11", 186 to start. And I'm just thinking like, okay, I'll probably be really lean at like 180. I thought I just maybe needed to lose like a few pounds. I was probably already like, you know, 11, 12, 13% body fat. So I like, I was pretty lean already, maybe even like 10% body fat when I started. And I ended up needing to lose like 24 to 28 pounds. Like I think on the show day, I was like 158. So I lost 28 pounds in order to get a six pack. And I was already fairly lean. So you're probably going to need to lose more weight than you think. And you will lose a little bit of muscle mass in the process. But that's okay because you're going to be leaner. Then what you want to do is you want to set up your diet plan every single day. So if you truly want to get a six pack, instead of just using calories and protein, I would recommend using full macros. So proteins, carbs, and fats. And the reason why I recommend that is because if your carb intake fluctuates too much on a day-to-day -day basis, um, your water weight is going to fluctuate quite a bit. So I'd recommend keeping your carb intake fairly consistent as well. If your goal is just to get a flat stomach, just doing calories and protein is fine. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have all groceries or pre-prepared meals ready to go. And pretty much everything we're talking about right here applies to whatever fitness goal you have. We're just talking about how it applies to getting a six pack or getting visible apps. You want to make sure you have everything prepared in advance. You don't want to be winging it day to day. Like nutrition is critical when it comes to getting leaner. And if you're just winging it or you don't have an actual plan, it's going to be a lot harder. So what I personally do is I have approximately the same thing every single day in terms of my food intake so that the variable does not change. So food labels can be off by up to 20%. The governing body that regulates them says that they can be up, they can be off by up to 20%, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. So if you are taking in 2,200 calories a day and you're eating different foods every single day, you could be eating 2,000 calories one day or like 2,400 calories another day. Like it could be a wide range. And again, if you're just trying to get flat stomach, that's one thing. But if you truly want definition, I would recommend not having the variable change all the time. Then what you want to do is you want to schedule your training. So right now, I get up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday, and I train four days a week. And depend we have a newborn at home, so assuming that the feeding schedule works out as it does, then I start training at about like 520 and go to like 620. So train for about, you know, 50 minutes to an hour. And I do it consistently. And I recommend training consistently at about the same time every single day, every single week, just because that way it becomes a habit. Then what I highly recommend is pre-log your food in a food tracking app. So you already know how you're going to hit your nutritional targets for the day. The first time in 2016, I didn't actually, where I did a, a physique show or, and I did a photo shoot, I didn't actually track my nutrition in app or anything like that. I just used like a Google spreadsheet and I basically just followed a meal plan. This is just a lot easier for me to comprehend, just like follow a meal plan. It's simpler. Um, now I track my food because I do have some flexibility a little bit more day to day. But um, that way it just makes it easier to hit your targets on a day-to-day -day basis because you already know going into the day how you're going to hit your targets and you're not like trying to figure it out throughout the day when you're already working full-time. You've got stuff with the kids. You've got other activities. You've got other things in your life going on. It's just going to be a lot harder if it is not already planned out for you. So the night before, take a few minutes, maybe when you and your spouse are sitting down to watch a show at night or watch a game or whatever you're watching, just take a few minutes and pre-log in whatever app that you use, what your nutrition is going to be for the next day, and then just follow it. You can always change it if you want, but that way you at least know going into the day how you're going to hit your targets. Then every single week, you need to track your weight, measurements, and progress photos. If you don't track things, if you don't track your nutrition, if you don't track your progress, how are you going to know if you're making progress? 
use objective measures. Don't just like, you know, look under your shirt and say like, oh yeah, it looks like I'm making progress or maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That might work for a while, but after a while, like you need to have like objective data. So you know definitively whether or not you're making progress. So I tell our clients inside the Total Life Fitness Academy to every single week, they must weigh themselves at least three times, uh, up to seven times. I personally weigh myself every single day because you're going to have very variable weight throughout the week. You have fluctuations based on water weight and everything else. So you just check in with yourself. You can use a Google spreadsheet, or if you have a coach, you check in with your coach. That's what we help people with inside our program. The Total Life Fitness Academy is we check in with them every single week. Um, if you reach a plateau, what you do is you modify your calories or you create a further deficit anywhere from 5 to 10%. Just depends on a lot of individual variances. If you're losing like, you know, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, pounds per week, you might cut closer to, you know, the 5% target. If you're not losing any weight or you're gaining weight, you want to cut probably closer to the 10% target. Then you want to do this until you reach your desired weight. Now, you might need diet breaks in there, here, or there. And a diet break is where you are eating at a maintenance calorie intake. You're not trying to lose weight. You're just letting your hormones recover, your metabolism recover. There's maybe a taking a break physiologically. And there are a lot of benefits to having diet breaks as well. But that is a topic for a, an entirely separate podcast. Then you always want to start your calories as high as you can. Because if you start too low, you're not going to have much room to cut. Everyone always wants a six pack immediately, right? And why wouldn't you? It's instant gratification society. I mean, I can pull up my phone right now and I can look at Facebook and I have, you know, eight notifications and it's new stuff. It's exciting. Um, Instagram, you got all these notifications. You got the feed. You just scroll, you scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, it's harder to focus than ever. So, no wonder you want everything immediately, right? Just like we want results with our body immediately. But the fact of the matter is, if we cut too fast, so like, for example, if you're that six foot, 200 pound, 40 year old man who's training four days a week and you start at 1500 calories, sure, you might lose weight rapidly and lose it in the beginning. But then what happens when you reach a plateau? You're gonna have to cut to like 1300 calories. And then you're gonna be miserable. You're gonna be starving. And then you're going to end up, you know, going off your plan, gaining the weight back. Your metabolism is going to downregulate. And not much good is going to happen long term. Might be great in the short term, but not in the long term. And everything that we do in Total Life Fitness on this podcast is we talk about the long term impacts of things. We want you to be successful long term to so actually able to keep the results and not just have a quick fix. So summing things up. You want to make sure that you have your intake calculated, figure out your calories and your macronutrients, your proteins, carbs, and fats. Then you want to, uh, assuming that you have body fat to lose, you want to figure out the calorie deficit that you need to have to lose weight consistently and slowly and sustainably. Then you need to plan your nutrition in advance each day, not just wing it, schedule your training, do it consistently, cut your calories, and adjust your workouts accordingly, and then do this until you achieve the desired result. So again, summing things up, if you want to be six-pack lean, the level of effort and dedication is going to be greater. If you just want a flat stomach, you still need to have dedication, but maybe not to the degree of if you want to have a visible six-pack. So again, this is just me sharing what I've seen work with our clients, with myself, and with others who I've been around and take from it, whatever you will. First, you have to understand what your goals are and what you actually want to achieve. So if you want any more information or have any questions on that, go to the link in the show notes, send me an email. We also have a private Facebook group you can join. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, watch this on YouTube or wherever you're consuming this. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, we have a podcast as well it's all called the Total Life Fitness Podcast. So hopefully this has been helpful and we will chat soon.